Hi! I've been kind of stuck here since, you know, all of December and most of January so far because apparently my voice still hadn't fully recovered yet. So that's been a lark. It's been an absolute pleasure. So I had all these ideas for stuff to talk about because I wanted to make more original content rather than just be like the guy that goes like, I just watched The Punisher. The Punisher was okay. And it's like, now I'm just stuck on my phone thinking like, what am I supposed to do? Now that I am actually back, oh, by the way, I'm back, baby. It's just, is there anything we could still talk about what people still do like? Yes! Hi, and welcome back to whatever this is really, to be honest. Nice! Right, so I want to talk to you guys about why we all hate Admiral Holdo, Vice Admiral Holdo, you know, the lady in The Last Jedi who was played by Laura Dern. And if you don't know who Laura Dern is, perhaps a little known movie like Blue Velvet rings your bell. Also, she was in Jurassic Park, which is one of those films that everybody must have seen at least once in their lifetimes. I refuse to accept it. It's a possibility that nobody has seen Jurassic Park because that's just weird. So there is a huge backlash about her. Like, a lot of people seem to hate her and they don't like her. She strolls in and all acting like she owns the place. Like, you have to, you know, think of it like this. I hated her the first time around as well. Here comes, like, you know, the big shocker. Here comes this lady who's dressed up like, a little bit like Leia in episode four, and she's tall and she's got this purple hair. Nobody else in this series of films has got purple hair. So she's like the standout. Is she human or has the hair, you know, been changed artificially either by choice or not? And she walks in and treats our main guys with disrespect. Think of it. We, the audience, have spent the entire Force Awakens getting to know Poe Dameron. Poe Dameron's our main boy, you know? He's not Ray, he's not Finn, but he's the hotshot, you know, the, the ace pilot. The guy who talks fast, shoots faster, and you know, quick on the draw, and can fly anything you can put him in. We spent the Force Awakens first thinking he might have died. He develops this bromance with Finn because they get along really well, and he's happy that Finn's still alive. He swoops in with his X-Wing and a lot of rebel forces when the First Order are threatening Finn and Han Solo and Rey at Mas Katana's smuggler's hideout and, you know, the last bits of the film which echo harken back to Episode 4 and they take down the Star Destroyer base and it's, oh my god, the planet killer. Ah, so we all love, we love Poe Dameron and even still, if you completely missed out on The Force Awakens. Imagine you're a newcomer to the series and your partner really loves Star Wars and he drags you along and you're like, well, I did trim my goatee today. I may just wear my cutest Star Wars memorabilia t-shirt I can find and, you know, rock up and see whatever The Last Jedi might just be about. So The Last Jedi opens with Poe Dameron. He's having a little bit of a chat with the obvious Nazi stand-in. One of the Weasley kids from Harry Potter, I think. The establishing opening scenes are pivotal to the film. It is to remind us, or at least let people who don't know, get to know Poe Dameron. He's the hotshot and he's clever, quick-witted, funny, and within just a few easy maneuvers, what it seems for him, he managed to take out, or at least make a lame duck out of a massive Star Destroyer dreadnought, or whatever that might be. So the plot of the film happens, and it's Ma Max Fury Road in space, and they can't escape from these evil First Order Star Destroyer ships because they're being tracked 
So Poe and his buddy Finn and their newly recruited friend Rose, they come up with a plan sending Finn and Rose away. So Poe has to stall for time. Unfortunately, the opening scene also gave us Poe's failing. He acted recklessly. Because of this, the Rebel forces have lost all of their in-space bomber jets. However that might work, I'm not here for the science, I'm here for the fiction. So, because of this, Leia, General Leia, has reprimanded him. And now Leia, alongside several of the other major leaders of the Rebel forces, all get destroyed in one fell swoop. Leia manages to survive, just, you know, by the narrowest margin, because she's force sensitive and apparently nobody cares about Admiral Akbar. So, all of our main plays that we know from all these years ago, you know, like, all the way episode 6, these are all gone. Leia is gone. Carrie Fisher, God rest her soul, has already passed away. So is this the way that they kill off Leia? We don't know, but watching the film. So Poe has devised this plan, and he's not telling the new Vice Admiral Holdo, who's been very withholding of information. This is because Poe has just, you know, managed to tick Leia off. So Holdo is coming in out of the blue, and it's like, do we know this lady? Who is she? She's not treating Poe with any respect. So Poe doesn't treat her with respect. He goes around behind her back and he tries to pull off, you know, one of those one in a million shot kind of plans. So Poe is our audience surrogate. We love Poe. We have also invested in Finn and Rose, who are now on Cantorbite, a casino planet, apparently. It's just a plan full of casinos, so maybe it's just like Monaco. And we want them to succeed, but in order for Finn and Rose to succeed, Poe has to be able to buy enough time for the plan to go on. So, for the story that we, the audience, are invested in, Poe has an obstacle in Vice Admiral Holdo. And this is why Vice Admiral Holdo exists. She's there to perform a plan that goes against the wishes of the heroes, or at least the audience's perceived heroes. Would it work? Yes. Holdo's plan, as originally intended, would have worked. There would have been a couple of more casualties, like the medic ship that was following them, that had to be left behind, and someone would have to pilot, you know, the last cruiser that the rebel force still had. But we all saw how that ended up in all the escape vessels that wouldn't have been noticed. So this is the point. We hate Admiral Holdo as an audience. And you probably did as well. She came in haughty, didn't want to tell our so audience circuit what was going on because at that point he hadn't deserved it. And I hated her too. I'll freely admit it. It wasn't until she turned the ship around that I went, I uh, like, okay, that's something. And here's the thing, when I was watching the film, I thought maybe they could have used someone from The Force Awakens. Maybe they could have introduced somebody in that film and brought her back for this one. But that wouldn't have worked as effectively. You wanted someone who we didn't know to come off as an unreasonable person that could not be discussed with because we know our heroes have this one in a million shot. They failed, they messed up badly, absolutely caused a massive shitstorm and they were intending to, or at least you know according to the story they were intending to because The Last Jedi eventually is about failure and how you deal with it. You probably have a good reason, because it's designed to play on your irrational side rather than, you know, the logical side behind it, because your heart's connected to the people that you want to succeed. And still, as much as you tell me that she should have been cut or that she's awful or an SJW insert or whatever you can think of, that moment when she turned that cruiser around, she light speed rammed smoke ship 
can't tell me that's not 10 of the most glorious seconds you've seen last year on film. Because my audience was silent. And it was all by design. And it was all by design. Not to have this character that we hated or disliked or distrusted go out with a whimper, but you know, to end with a massive bang. Anyway, if you're watching this, you probably have lots of opinions about Star Wars as well. Best part is YouTube has accommodated something specially for you. It's called a comment section, it's right there. You can leave all your insults down below. You can give me a big thumbs down because I don't need any pick me ups this week. Uh, you can subscribe because you can see my big fat face alongside the camera a lot more often because I hope to do this a lot more often. Um, I think things with me and Stuart will be back soon, but that's a promise. And so. You'll see me soon, and I won't see you because cameras don't work like that. See ya!